What does standards-based grading look like in a mathematics classroom? This video was created by Annie Pettit, a math teacher at Van Meter. When I first started the process, I contacted people that had already started using standards-based grading, and I also read many blogs. Here are some of the resources I used. Right now, I use standards-based grading in two classes, Advanced Math and Geometry. The first thing I did was write the standards in kid-friendly language. For Advanced Math, I give them the standards at the beginning of each semester. For Geometry, I give them the standards one chapter at a time. I will come back to the assignments listed here at a later time. Our entire Van Meter district uses the same scale, A, B, C, F, and 0. The math department wrote a description of what each value on the scale means. Basically, a C is average or proficient. The student has a basic conceptual knowledge of the standard. A B is if the student makes computational or other small errors, so they are secure. An A represents work with no errors, so they are accomplished. We also made a kid-friendly scale as shown here. This example includes the numerical values that we used last year, but the categories are still the same. Here is an example of a test page. I put the standard and kid-friendly scale on each part. The kids can rate themselves so that you all have an understanding of where they think they are at as well. I found that four standards is about the max I can have on any test in order to keep the grading at a level that is not overwhelming. We use active grade to record the scores. As you can see, the abbreviated standards are on top, followed by the student's performance. This is a detailed view of a student's performance on one standard. My reassessment policy has changed over the past couple years. Since I teach at a small district, I have many of the students um, several times. I have found this policy works best for my kids. In geometry, the students have practice problems, but these do not figure into the student's grade. I collect them and look over them for correctness. If the students get more than 70% correct, they get a check in the gradebook. If they don't score that high, I give the assignment back so we can go over it. The students must have all of the homework completed for a learning target or standard in order to reassess. That is why their chapter um, standard sheet had all of the practice problems on it. Their latest performance on any standard is their grade for that standard. I give them until the next test to reassess. There are a couple reasons. One, math material tends to build on previous concepts. And two, I do not want the students waiting until the last minute. In advanced math, the students take weekly quizzes that have one to four standards on them. The standards are covered two to four times throughout the semester, and I use the median grade as their final grade for that standard. The students do not have the option to come in and reassess whenever they want. It is important that you communicate with your parents and students when you first start. Here is part of the letter I used last year. To calculate the final grade, our district developed a policy which is shown here. For more information, you can contact me at annie.pettit at vmbulldogs.com. 